So folks, TGV is known for bringing up guests from different parts of the world. And this time we have our first guest from Bulgaria and we are joined by Nadia Dinisheva. She's an experienced sales alliances and people manager with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry. And she's skilled in negotiation, business planning, sales, professional services, and management. And she's most importantly passionate about organization and business psychology, customer-centric selling, and process communication management. So as we prepare to delve into our conversation on the topic at hand, mentoring unleashed, you know, right, mentoring and coaching are two of my favorite topics right so we are excited to bring this topic mentoring unleashed but before we get into the topic here's an exciting twist let us tickle the brains of our guest nadia so nadia get ready for a rapid fire round of random words i'll mention a few and i would love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response without thinking much are you ready for it i am <laughs> <laughs> okay comes the first word curiosity doesn't kill the cat <laughs> I think you're the first one <laughs> who said it. <laughs> Everyone says curiosity killed the cat. Okay, next. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. Why curiosity doesn't uh, kill the cat? Let's talk about it in during our conversation. Next is in sure. <laughs> keeps you on your toes. Future excitement. Book peace. Movie. Um, the Lost City. Awesome and aliens. Vastness. <laughs> Universe. Unthinkable. <laughs> Leadership. Responsibility. Role model. Copycat. Last one is success. I'm feeling proud of yourself. Amazing rabbit fire and thank you so much for participating in that. Before I welcome you, I want to welcome the audience. So folks, welcome to the Guiding Voice podcast series where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala, dedicated to making the world a better place through valuable discussions that add value not only to your life, but also to your career. Thank you so much for tuning in. And Nadia Dinisheva, hearty welcome to The Caring Voice. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Naveen, for having me in your podcast. I'm super excited and looking <laughs> forward to our discussion. Same here, and I would like to thank my mentee Stephen Robin for connecting us. Though it's been pending for some time, but we are able to drive this today, and I'm equally excited. Let's get started, and I would like to start with the success mantra as always, because I would like to understand the top three things that have contributed or attributed to your success so far. Well, there are many things that have helped me be the person that I'm now. Uh, back in my childhood, I used to do a lot of sports. Um, I started off my career with rhythmic gymnastics, then moved to close to seven years of professional tennis playing, finally ending up with track and field, 800 meters running for three years. For one thing that has helped me immensely is the discipline and persistence when you do sports, no matter how early in the morning it was or how cold or how how but I've never really missed a practice. So this kind of built the discipline and uh, persistence that I that has helped me all along. Another thing is how I look at challenges and opportunities that come along. It's the mindset that you kind of naturally develop and the attitudes towards the tasks that you have to do in your daily daily interactions. It's easy to whine and complain and feel miserable, but at the end of the day, it's, it's up to you to decide how you want to act upon what you're doing. Last but not least, I would say that um, I've always been critical of myself. And whenever I embrace something, I do my best to do it in the right way, not with mediocrity. If I can do something, I will say so. But if I commit, I make sure it's being done and delivered. So that strong sense of accountability has really contributed to who I am nowadays. Amazing, Nadia. 
and one thing i can resonate with you is the way we look at the opportunities and challenges right challenges are always opportunities in disguise and sometimes people get bogged down and they think only why me why it is happening and instead of looking at the big picture okay is there any anything that 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 is going to be positive right let us think about the positive aspects in terms of learning that is going to happen i think that's a profound point that you made now let's just slowly get into the mentoring and coaching part so i would like to understand okay from your early career how did you navigate the challenges and do you think having a coach or mentor would have changed your approach and since you said you are from the sports background i believe you had some interaction with your coaches at least from the sports fraternity at the early age if i am not wrong no you're right and uh, sports coaches they really tend to shape you as a person as a sports individual and they contribute big time to developing and modeling your behavior no matter no matter what you do but if i draw the line i would say that um my parents have been the biggest mentors that i've had so mm-hmm. far in my life my childhood has been underpinned with the fact that every 4 years we had to change countries because that's what my dad did so every 4 years i had to relocate to a new society new environment new school and sometimes it takes quite a burden to learn how to adapt and fit into into a new society one thing that has helped in my early times was that at home we used to talk a lot during lunch during dinner we always sat together and we discussed how the day has passed what interesting things have happened what challenges we faced one thing i would say that we sought advice from each other and frankly speaking one would say well what would my father be seeking from an 11 year old who has no clue about business profession interacting with people etc but that's not the core point the core point is within the family when you learn to talk and share you start to build that confidence that you're open to seek advice there's nothing wrong to say i have a problem can you help me and what my parents taught me is that be open get out what's on your mind embrace what other people have to tell you unfortunately today not many families sit together and talk and we understand life is not so easy for many people around the world but guys no matter how young or how old your children are or what the environment in the family is make sure you treat your kids with the proper seriousness on the topics that they bring along because as parents your actions or inactions they impact that foundation in your kids to grow up as sound individuals now when i moved into the professional world uh back um in 1989 <laughs> that's when i started my first job at that time there were no coaches and mentors they basically what happened is here's your job do it so i was thrown in the deep and i really had to learn to swim nobody asked me can i swim you just uh, buckle up your sleeves and you start doing the best as you can and i'm sure that at that time if i had a mentor or a coach i would have learned things in a much more efficient way but yeah fighting in tough times that what grows you and forms you as an individual amazing i love the concept of inter family having dinner and your father has encouraged the culture of open feedback as we speak i am reflecting on in terms of how i am <laughs> behaving with my family i think it's a hope i open up for me i think it is i open up for everybody who has young children i think we have to inculcate that particular culture of oh, yes. uh, a lot of brother. a lot of people say we don't have time i mean yeah. don't bother me with your mm. childish problems and issues and i think this is wrong yeah we yeah. always can find time to talk to our kids yeah absolutely point taken and uh, i'm sure i'll try to have as much time as possible particularly having dinner or lunch together is going to immensely help right as you said thank you thank you and this is the beauty of uh, 
talking to people from different backgrounds and i i learn i get to learn for information first hand before my audience does that and that's why i'm getting addicted to the podcasting uh, nadia <laughs> I, can, i can imagine with all the interesting people that you come across yeah it's uh, it's amazing and what you're doing i think it's great yeah sure thank you now let's move forward like can you also share a specific uh, instance where coaching and mentoring played a pivotal role in uh, someone's earlier career or maybe you can talk about your own career also and which might have led to accelerated learning and growth i think it was it was a very interesting case back in 2019 at one of the companies i worked for i was assigned a mentee she was in her early 20s and she recently has been promoted as a team leader to an already established team within the company so she had to master skills around dealing with already bonded team confrontations um how to build trust as an outsider to that team and at the same time you know maintain the level of professionalism that was needed for the job her challenges were that on one side the team did not see her as a as a manager at the same time her authority was constantly being undermined by certain individuals within that team environment who were constantly objecting and sabotaging whatever decision she made i have to say it was quite an exo- toxic environment that she had to deal with further to put on top of that um her presentation skills were not that strong so she was struggling to get her message through in the right way so that people can buy in you know and agree or follow to what had to be done on the job and last but not least the level of stress and self doubt that she had really prevented her from being able to prioritize and structure her time in such a way that she doesn't overwork herself so interesting enough the way she approached our mentoring sessions was amazing i have to say um she always led the learning curve by asking tough questions that were pressing on her mind challenging my guidance towards her and doing her best to seek to adopt the best way to move forward she she was really open and transparent and whatever feedback was given to her she really embraced it and tried to think what does that mean for me so that she could take correct to correct steps to improve what she's doing interesting enough after close to 6 months of working with her i noticed that she started building that trusted relationship with the team mm-hmm. and slowly the team started embracing her as a manager you know If you're a mentee for her it was very important to succeed in this role. She had too many things at stake. And what was pleasing is 2 years later I heard that she was invited by her direct customer to join their team as the regional director for distribution management within Central and Eastern Europe. And mm. I have to say that it's so good to see somebody who has really embraced and wanted to do that change they really succeeded in moving forward to the next level what was key for her she was not afraid to make mistakes she was not afraid to ask questions and she was not afraid to challenge me as as her mentor and her coach and uh the two did go hand in hand because sometimes when you're a coach you get the luxury to ask your coachy of questions mm-hmm. that normally want to neglect and you don't want to face yourself. So, I have to say with her, um it was an amazing experience and I'm so glad she had a breakthrough. Yeah. So, what I notice is I think being open and transparent and uh, be open for the constructive feedback because many a times in fact I I have a, a great mentor uh, right now with, uh, within my organization and uh, I can resonate with uh, some of the aspects that you mentioned especially related to open and transparent right if you are able to open about our weaknesses then we will get the right information 
and right get the right guidance from our mentor i think uh, this lady might have also received the feedback constructively and worked on that that is uh, evident and thank you remember for remember that yeah good one thing we need to notice is that feedback is not necessarily targeted to the person mm. as um as it, you know hurting emotions etc yeah it really depends how you interpret it people feedback is feedback it's yeah. something that you can learn something you can embrace people should not take it personally yeah yeah great i think yeah that, that is another important point like we should not take it personal like it is betterment of that particular situation and wherein you are going to be a great leader of that particular people and by gaining that trust and confidence yeah. wonderful so nadia you also mentioned about the synergy of coaching and mentoring which provides personalized guidance right so can you elaborate on how this approach is more effective than a one size fits all career development strategy well yeah coaching and mentoring what's interesting about them is that they're leveraging the unique needs goals and um strengths of mm-hmm. individuals you know coaching focuses on skills development setting the right goals um managing the performance providing feedback tailoring um strategies that really address the individual's current aspirations mentoring on the other hand is offering of wisdom somebody else's experience and advice support that that person has dealt with things happening in the past it's and it's both both coaching and mentoring they need to happen when you trust each other in a trusted relationship because if you don't trust your coach or your mentor it's not going to work now um you cannot have the same approach to every person because every person is unique you need to be able to address as a coach or a mentor you need to be able to address those areas which are specific to the individual now if you think about career success it's not only about acquiring the technical skills um and knowing you know the industry inside out but it's also about developing your self awareness your emotional intelligence resilience i have to say um these are all things which are very crucial if you want to move into the complex professional environment and achieving um long term success one size fits all it will overlook um the individual differences and inevitably it will result into a generic advice or generic training which may not resonate with that individual's needs the the, the-, the fear is that it could lead to disengagement um frustration uh limit pro- because the individual will think hey this is not addressing what i'm currently struggling with and it's not helping me so we need to be aware when you coach or your mentor you need to have that individual approach if you want to help the yeah. other person yeah got it and you have uh, very well explained the difference between coaching and mentoring and the, the, because many times people treat them as synonyms without understanding the underlying meaning and the purpose of uh, both of those all right so let's move forward and uh, let's talk about a scenario where someone is entering a new career and how do you think a mentor can help in avoiding common mit- common pitfalls and provide a balanced perspective on their professional journey well um a mentor can help in uh, in many ways and here are a couple of few the mentor can draw from his own experience or lessons learned to help the mentee anticipate and avoid common pitfalls the role here of the mentor is more about providing practical examples and advice how to handle similar situations all of course deriving from the mentor's experience we did uh, mention feedback but the feedback needs to be around you know the performance behaviors and the decision that the mentee how the decision the mentee is taking and again provide that feedback in a way so that it can help improve and take corrective actions before potential pitfalls occur 
you know, moving moving into a new job or a new career quite be, can be quite daunting and at the same time self-doubting. Am I good enough to do that job? Am I, do I have the skills right for it? So the role of the mentor here is that it provides emotional support um, to help overcome and find those inner resources within the mentee to build encouragement and confidence in the mentee's ability. I also have to say that mentors, because that usually these are people with quite broad and solid experience, therefore they can provide slightly bigger perspective on our organizational structures, business ethics, um, more insight, etc. And it's all about helping the mentee to become aware of what is the surrounding environment and how to act within certain circumstances when they arise. Okay, so let's uh, uh, take it big here. And Let's talk about the environment where learning, resilience and adaptability are crucial. How do you think mentoring can contribute to the development of a growth mindset in that particular individual or mentee? Well, we need to we need to be clear because nowadays everybody's talking about growth mindset. Yeah. Right? It's so mm. good to have it. But what is growth mindset? <laughs> For me, I have always perceived, you know, the, the skills and knowledge and the abilities that I have or any individual, they're not, they're not core locked. And with time, you do learn new skills um, as long as you truly want to learn those. And this is where, for me, the notion of growth mindset comes. If you truly want something, you're going to get it. You're going to make it happen. Having growth mindset is to be open and eager to explore and learn new things. If you look at, to, to be able to look at circumstances from the point of view, pretty much everything is possible. It's true, if you're welcoming whatever life brings you along, if you're welcoming this with a positive attitude, with time, your skills and talent, most importantly, your emotional intelligence, are going to help you immensely. If you're someone who is just entering the work life cycle and having a mentor would definitely complement the efforts and offer a different perspective to things, which is important because you don't have that experience as early in your career when you start. Mm -hmm. So there are three things that I really see um, that you, one can do you know, to develop um, a growth mindset. First and foremost, if you're choosing a mentor, it would be great if that mentor himself or herself has that growth mindset that you can monitor and model from. By observing how your mentor is tackling challenges and how he or she is pushing forward through obstacles, uh, you can learn how to adopt the similar attitude and behavior so that when these kind of things come along, you already have an example of how you can handle it. Second thing is about resilience. I did mention it in the beginning, and I think resilience is very crucial nowadays. Many people tend to give up very early when things get tough or when a lot of effort is required for them or they get too tired of fighting the game. Mentors would play the emotional support that people would need. And they really could be an eye opener for finding that level of encouragement when times get tough. And last but not least, I felt I felt that, that way when I jumped on my first very first job. I felt the power that I can change the world, that I can do anything that comes along. And uh, yeah, sooner or later, I realized that this uh, doesn't happen that easily. That's why it's important when you set your goals, you need to set your goals realistically and set yeah. realistic expectations. There's nothing wrong to think about big and have big dreams, but make sure you break them down into smaller chunks of manageable steps. You yeah. know, they say many a little makes a mickle. So <laughs> the coach can help you with those corrective actions 
mm-hmm. and challenge you on your own thoughts and notions of time and deadlines. And yeah. That can help immensely. So, Nadia, one other aspect which uh, fascinates me is most of the times is coaching and mentoring, right? They create the support system which encourages on the attaining the goals or maybe account uh, holding the accountable, uh, holding the individuals accountable for goals, right? But how can they also encourage continuous improvement throughout different career stages? Well, how can they increase continuous improvement? It's all about accountability, I have to say. There's no system or tool that can hold you accountable for your own goals. You know, coaching and mentoring, they would facilitate the environment, a safe environment, I have to say, where you can get guidance, get feedback and encouragement through regular check-ins, um, provision of space to explore insights, safe environment, brainstorm solutions and stay focused but at the end of the day if you don't do what you tell yourself you have to do no system or tool is going to make you do it people procrastinate and i think this is this is the biggest challenge uh, in preventing people from achieving their goals and there are many reasons why people procrastinate just to name the few fear of failure people are afraid to fail and make mistakes So what happens? They delay to avoid facing those fears. Perfectionism is another reason why people procrastinate. Until you want to make things perfect, you don't start to deal with them because you have high standards. When you start doing something, it wants to you want you want it to be perfect from day one. Another thing, and I think this is the most painful mm-hmm. one, is that people believe they lack the resources they believe they lack the resources when it comes to time skills and knowledge it's nothing disastrous so many times we have found excuses why not to do something but have people given themselves you know the thought it's so painful to constantly be explaining yourself why you haven't done this why you haven't started that the very fact that you by default moving into the role of the victim finding excuses and defending yourself why you haven't done this mm-hmm. sometimes can be so shameful and so demotivating mm-hmm. and this is where the role of the coach and mentor come in they're not going to tolerate your excuses at some point they're going to start asking those tough questions that you know deep inside what the answer is but until you speak it out loud what is the core of the problem people wouldn't get it off their shoulders get that relief and move forward coaches and mentors can help get that core problem out and speak and speak it out yeah got it and it's been it's been great conversation and uh, it's now time for us to add some excitement and some more sparkle if you should let's do the second rapid fire round <laughs> well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> I hope I did a good job with the first one. <laughs> you did fantastic job. And here comes the second rapid fire round. First question is like if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Awesome. And if you could swap your life for with uh, someone for a day, who would it be and why? David Attenborough. Yes, I I really love his um series about the biodiversity that he does mm-hmm. the encounter with nature and the way he manages to capture those animals i have to say it's amazing we can learn so much from the environment that we're surrounded by which unfortunately many of us take for granted yeah good one and can you describe yourself in just one word oh persister for sure <laughs> amazing <laughs> and what is one of the most memorable incidents in your life uh getting my driving license after failing seven times <laughs> wow such a <laughs> heights of persistence <laughs> 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 
seven times <laughs> oh wow i think you are going to remember it forever <laughs> okay so nadia if you could have any super power what would it be and why teleportation mm uh, um, i have uh, to say because i love to travel i love to to meet different uh-huh. cultures be at different places mm-hmm. i wish i had that power you know to go back in time mm-hmm. to see what was life like what okay. were people like so yeah teleportation for sure okay so uh, i uh, the last one for the rapid fire if you could have someone okay imaginary anybody any character in the history or anybody okay along with you on your dinner table who would you invite who and what who would i invite gee there's so many people i want to invite but i think i want to invite um well she's dead already uh-huh. elizabeth yes i'd like to i'd like to be able to talk to her to understand mhm what is it to be a queen and at the same time you know mm-hmm. still be within the boundaries of things that yeah. you can or cannot do sure. what is that feeling like wow nice and let's uh, flip back to the mainstream and here comes the last question from the kanal for the conversation around mentoring and coaching so now, so that we have had a wonderful conversation around the concept and the impact of coaching and mentoring on early career development so what will be your advice to the audience especially those embarking on their professional journeys what will be your single piece of advice find your passion um even if you're just jumping into the professional world always be curious keep on asking questions and don't don't take things for granted don't tolerate mediocrity because mediocrity is the proviso for becoming indifferent amazing i i love the uh, all the insights that you have shared and uh, how is your experience being hosted on the guiding voice platform did it meet your expectations or how is your <laughs> frankly navin i had no expectations for me it was great to have you know to have that discussion and share my learnings and um you know skills whatever i can help people out i'm ready to do that but the most important what i realized is um speaking over a platform mm-hmm. without knowing how you come across <laughs> uh, i have to say it's amazing because i'm truly being myself yeah uh, pure natural no vanity expectations with looks and feels etc so i think it's great yeah. to to really be who you are yeah. and i hope what i hope what i've shared today that your audience would find something useful for them and take it along as an advice or a tip whatever they find would work for them absolutely i think you have given a lot of insights which are going to help all the early career professionals and not only early career but also mid career professionals and thank you so much for all the valuable insights that you have shared by taking out time out of your busy schedule i really appreciate it and looking forward to many more conversations in future nadia Likewise success Naveen and uh keep doing what you're doing. Sure. Thank you so much. So friends that was our episode with uh, Nadia Dinisheva on coaching and mentoring especially for the young professionals and how the workforce that are going to begin their career can leverage mentoring and coaching to excel in their careers. Before we jump into the fun trivia section we have a quick request for you in case if you haven't already request you to subscribe to the guiding voice podcast from wherever you have tuned in because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes and also if you have enjoyed this conversation please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like tgv the guiding voice so spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you now let's hop into the trivia segment i would like to complement the topic that was discussed around mentoring and coaching with a few lesser known facts about coaching and there comes the first one is about historical roots coaching has its historical roots in sports and the term coach originally referred to as a horse drawn carriage and later universally tutors used it metaphorically to describe those who helped students carry through their exams and over time it became synonymous with the guiding and training individuals and second is about coaching versus therapy while coaching and therapy share some similarities coaching is future focused and action oriented aiming to help clients achieve specific goals however therapy on the other hand 
often delves into the past issues and focuses on healing psychological wounds. And third one is about global growth of coaching. Coaching has experienced significant global growth and it is not only prevalent in the corporate world but also expanded into various areas including life coaching, executive coaching, health coaching and even sports coaching for individuals as well as teams. So friends, in the journey of your career, Remember that seeking guidance is a strength. It is not at all a weakness and embrace the support of mentors and coaches for they can be the compass guiding you through uncharted territories and your early career is a canvas painted with the colors of learning, resilience and growth. So happy career building and I would love to hear your thoughts on coaching and mentoring in case if your career coach or mentor has helped you in significant way or in some way or the other please share your story in terms of how your career coach or mentor has transformed your life or career. I would love to hear your stories and, and talk about them in future episodes. So that's it for today. And thank you so much for tuning in and also for being part of our awesome community. Folks, we would love to hear from you. So do not hesitate to share your ideas, topic recommendations, guest speaker suggestions or feedback either through social media or you can also email us at theguidingvoiceforyou at gmail.com and let's create content that resonates with you. I'm your host, Navin Samala, a dedicated professional and a lifelong learner. And my goal is to have impactful conversations that improve not only your life, but also your career. So until next time, take care and stay inspired. Remember the best is yet to come. Goodbye for now. See you on the next episode with another amazing guest.